Hello, and welcome to a basic lathe demonstration for Midwest Cam Solutions. Well, first we're going to start by making a new program. We're going to call this Basic Lathe Part. And we'll save it in a directory. And the first place we go is the document. The document's where we control the machine type. So we'll set it for a horizontal lathe. The material type, this is a speeds and feeds library of LA groups for different speeds and feeds cutting data. We'll use carbon steel. We'll use a low carbon and about a 200 vanilla. The diameter of the part that we're going to draw from this little basic lathe part here is going to be a 4 inch diameter. We'll have 30 thousandths in the front and minus 4 inches long. If we turn tool change position on, we can type in where we want the tool change to index. To turn shift position. If you turn it off, it goes home for safety. The holder library will be a one inch shank lathe, which will streamline the availabilities for this size machine. Auto clearance will turn on, and I'll set it for 20 thousandths. Auto clearance will al automatically calculate your approach and exits for all your cuts. We can turn it off and designate some safe zones that would be used for uh, if we don't use auto clearance. And in the comment box down here we can type in uh, part number revision, quantity, any kind of a program comment that you'd want at the header of the program that will be listed in man readable code. We can close the document. We now have our stock to find. The buttons on the left side are what we use to make parts with. And we always visit, visit the document first generally and then go to the geometry palette the view control can be pulled out we can change the views. Points line circles are freeform CAD tools and Geometry Expert is a tool that I use for turning a lot. Um, what's nice about Geometry Expert is it defines each entity and connects as it goes and it builds an associative uh, geometry of the part which can easily be adjusted for a family of parts. And the word workgroup up here is the layer name and work groups are for part uh, uh, reducing clutter with geometry or names and descriptions that help us in the code at the machine. The first entity is going to be a line at 90 degrees, line parallel to Z at zero. We'll enter that line in. The next line is going to be have an endpoint on it because there's an angle coming through it, so we're going to find it as an endpoint line, minus one for Z, X diameter one. 180 degrees. We hit an enter. My next angled line goes through that endpoint at a 45. The next diameter for the thread relief is 0.8. The next shoulder is minus 1.25. We can enter that in. We can type in where the next OD line is or alt click and it'll load in the value and enter that. My next Z is minus 1.5. We have a 2 inch spud diameter. It goes to minus 3 to the next shoulder. 4 inches to the major diameter, minus 4 to the end. 0 will be the center part. There's no OD work. And when we want to complete the shape, we simply click this icon and click this little cross here, and it closes the shape, and we can close this. Shape's done. Now, we need a chamfer on the front. We could have uh, put that in with Geometry Expert, but I choose to use a simpler manner where I can do chamfering and filleting with the auto chamfer button. And when we do go back to Geometry Expert now, if I double click and load it back in, you can click on any one of these features and you could reposition that entity to where you want it to be. You click on this radius, you could change the size, and so forth. So once you do have a shape drawn, it's really easy to modify it for uh, some differences. Well, the next thing we do is we go to Tools and then Cam. The Tool button brings up a tool list. And CAM brings up a process, an operation list, and a machining pellet. Um, to create tools, you can double click a tool and say what type of tool. We have lathe tools, we have mill tools. So if it was an 80 degree, a 30 second, half inch IC, 3 16 thickness, in a tool holder, this would be a C432. Every click on this arrow would put that tool in a different configuration. So 
this is an ability that you could, you know, simply on a fly just create a tool. Now I'm just going to delete this tool. Most Gibbs users build tools and processes and we save them so we can really make part machining fast. So under processes, in my lathe directory, I have an LA group for 1018 steel, OD turning. I'll select the 80 degree rough and finishes with two tools. It loads in my predefined process. Click where we want to start cutting. Put the start point out in front of the part. The end feature, right click end here, and it moves this end feature marker, which you can also drop and drag and tell it where to end on something. So if I say do it there, it only cuts from this area. If we want to cut up here, we can identify the area to cut up in this area. Now we can hit CPR, cut part render, and maybe slow this down, rewind, and play. So we have a roughing cycle going. You can hide or show the tool holder. See a transparent or solid tool holder. And, or maybe you don't see the tool holder, just see the insert. So your choice is easy to, to make. In this process that we just brought in, brought in our rougher with predefined names and our finisher all ready to go. The process was originally built by taking the tool, dragging it into this process pellet, pellet and told it we want to rough with it. We're going to do OD roughing, uh, 100 thousandths depth of cut, leave 20 on X, 5 on Z, and there's little check boxes down here for cut axis directions or limiters because when we're roughing the shape, we don't want the tool to slope down here. So by disabling this check box, it goes straight across uh, open values in the X minus area. By doing this, it eliminates us to have to redraw shapes to satisfy where a tool is allowed to go. My, my counter process was saved in using a no drag method. We're doing a little radius on, speeds and feeds from the library. And if I just select this op and redraw, you'll see just this tool path. What no drag means is don't drag the tool. Don't cut with the back side of the tool. So when it feeds to this wall, stops, comes up over here, rapids in, arcs in, goes back down, comes up, comes over, arcs in, and continues on. When the tool determines a drag point, it retracts, comes over, and does the same thing again by pushing down. And because we had a radius on here, corner break radius, it rounded and put a 5,000 sharp uh, corner and puts a radius on it. And we can let it render. Now, when we CPR with a selected op and cut color, the gray is a <coughs> non-selected op. The yellow would be a selected op. We'll watch this little no drag cutting here. So it lifts off, pushes down, pushes back, comes over, and does that. Now, if we turn no drag off, it'll take it all in one path. In the flash CPR settings, we have many choices, but I like the color op mode and I like every op to be a different color. If I don't prefer red, I can double click and say I want it to be green. Color mode helps us really see the differences of tools or operations to identify what a op or tool is actually doing. So you can see it real clearly and understand. Now after we've roughed and finished this, I want to do the grooving. I'm going to select my, ops, my process here so it gets replaced and go load in a, another process for my OD turning for grooving. And I'll use a 097 rough and finish. We'll load that in. Now if I want to just say, you know, look starting over here somewhere and end over here. In other words, I'm just giving it the ability to cut in these ranges and say do it. The tools only cut where they need to because we have material only on, which we generally use, you know, quite often because it saves us air cutting. And, and when the contra process, of course, we have a no drag. So it comes down one side and goes down the other. So the tool comes in and plunges, goes down one side, comes down the other. We can also overlay the geometry on the model around the cutting rendering so you can see the geometry shapes that you're cutting. This is helpful to see if you've really gotten everything you think you need to cut. And you can toggle that off and on. Now the last thing we need to do here in the turning is put a thread on it. I'm going to select these and go get a thread process for 1018 steel. A thread. I'll go grab in a one inch eight thread. Now we can open the thread process up and reestablish a different type of thread if you'd like. All threads known to man are in the library. It's a one inch thread. The TPI, threads per inch, if I type a 12 or whatever, it updates the minor thread height based on the machinery handbook data. It's going to be a uh, eight threads uh, per inch. The pitch is this, so you can talk metric or inch, converts back forth. 
We're doing an alternating and feed angles, so cuts to the front and the back. This first incremental value here is your first depth of cut, and your diminishing uh, depth of cut is a constant load. And your last cut, you could leave a little bit for a spring pass, which would be a balance cut and then a whisper cut. The area up here is where the thread is. We want it out in front of the part. This is where the thread starts. You can really in front of that would be 0.25. My uh, depth of cut in Z, if we alt click any of these little connectors, it'll tell us where that value is in Z. So you could load it in right from the model from the, or from the geometry. Our RPM is set for the carbon steel, do it. There's our thread cycle. Then the threading tool comes in and puts a little thread on it for us. Our flash CPR <coughs> shows us the op number that we're viewing. You can also have it show us the time, the cutting time. Under the window menu, there's an operation summary which gives us a easy to read report showing all the operations, what they're doing, and how long it takes to cut the part. Part's kind of done now. And of course, any of these operations, two clicks brings back any operation that we would have. Now, to make code, we hit the post processor button. Now, we've been working right now on this list, and the last thing on that left side is to, to make code for it. Now, we can go into our lathe directories for um, programming parts. We have a library of over 9,000 post processors. So they're categorized. So if I go to FANUC library, we can scroll through and, and select one for your machine type. So no matter what kind of machine you have, we have over uh, about 9,000 posts now in the library. So we can find one that will be uh, to your machine style and the control model in the make. Um, yeah, we'll just grab a Morisiki. We'll save the program in a directory. And I'll just put it on my desktop. And then the starting program number, sequence by one, go by ones, minimize, doesn't put ends in every line. And we want to see insert comments and optional stops. Process it, there's our code. We can scroll through and, and see our code. And view it and whatnot, all the comments that were in here and whatnot. So it's pretty simple to get code. Makes your day easy. Now, if this part is complete, we want to make one similar to this. We can go to Geometry Expert, reload the shape in. So maybe this part, this shoulder, is going to be at minus 2. Maybe this radius here is 0.250. Maybe this groove uh, width is minus 1.5. We can close that. We can also add new things, like maybe we want a radius in here of 0.2. Now, if we go to edit and say redo all my ops, it goes and redoes my part based on the new shape that we just drew. So sometimes from getting from part one to part two can just take seconds. It really speeds up that need when you do have family of parts and not just one part. This concludes our first little basic uh, lathe demonstration. Hope you enjoyed the demonstration and feel free to call with any questions. Thank you very much.